Okay, it's day 81, and as you can see, there's not all that much progress. Most robust plant is doing okay. You know, it has crumpled leaves, but this is a good leaf. It's all green. This one, you know, looks like it suffered chemical burns, and so does that one. But they're otherwise like two pretty good leaves as well. And, you know, it has two more functional leaves. This is a newer one, and so is that one, and it's working on two more right here in a new tendril. So this plant seems to be carrying on, and it always had the thickest stem, and it's by far the most robust, so I have high hopes for this plant. Regarding this plant in the middle, um, its shoot apical meristem died a while back, and this leaf is a good leaf. Uh, this one, not so much, but still serviceable. Um, I don't know, there's still something alive there, you know, that could work. And, you know, there's not much to go on. I hope this plant makes it and can start regenerating, but there's no reason it shouldn't be able to, although that shoot ape called meristem dying is very worrisome. It'll try to generate a new shoot ape called meristem somewhere else, but I've never seen this process so far in this experiment, so I'm not sure it can be done or will be done at this stage. You know, if it were much later and these plants had so many leaves and they were all large and relatively robust, then yeah, I would say it has a great chance, but as of now, maybe not. And finally, if we trace this one plant, you know, it has that tear that hasn't really compromised the plant, uh, amazingly enough, right there. It has a badly burned leaf and another one as well, although this one is a lot more serviceable, I would say. So it has three leaves that are pretty burned up, but otherwise serviceable, and it has a large uh, succulent new leaf, and it's working on some more. So that's an active tendril, I believe. It's day 83, so as you can see, uh, not much has changed. This most dominant plant is still growing. I think this has grown a little bit. Um, it's not completely in stasis. This plant has been a real champion throughout the entire process. Uh, these leaves are just, you know, something about saying these are just chemical burns. Uh, Okay, it's day 83. As you can see, this champion plant is still doing well. It has some more growth at these new leaves. Shoot April Mare stem seems very healthy. You know, these little uh, green nodes, uh, tufts of, I don't know exactly what that is. So if we look at these leaves um, on the bottom, I don't know if it's fair to say if that's just chemical burns because that's not quite what it looks like you know when I sprayed Lysol or insecticide assuming the Lysol caused all the damage you know because I didn't spray insecticide until after the damage had already occurred as you can see from the last update so these are kinda of suspicious it seems like the leaves were already thinned out in those parts and that you know maybe the Lysol only got in because of whitefly damage so these leaves are closer to the ground. You know, if Lysol was the sole, you know, cause of all this damage, it comes out of a spray bottle in a fine mist, so this entire leaf should be dead, you know, more evenly, not just in spots like that. And when you look at this leaf, it's sort of the same story. It's not burned as badly. One thing I find odd is that these tendrils haven't even reacted with these plastic support columns. Maybe they don't react to plastic support columns. Maybe they need some kind of a foreign species wood, you know, branches, twigs to have a reaction. I might get around to doing an experiment at some point and just, you know, planting a twig, a dead twig or something from another species and see what happens. But, uh, you know, I'm going to wait it out and see if at least uh, in the immediate future that these tendrils will indeed curl around these plastic spore columns. I don't see why not. Uh, basically anything this plant can grab onto, it should. One thing I never got is what these green tufts are at these uh, nodes, so to speak. 
you know, uh, where the stem branches off and goes to a petiole. So you have these tendrils, but you also have these green tufts, and I can't really see what's going on, you know, what are those things, but they're there. And they'll pretty much be there as long as the plant is healthy. Um, you know, from this angle, you can see another one here. Regarding this other plant, it seems to be doing okay, you know, there's still some growth, I think, uh, here, and for this leaf, it looks great, you know. It has two leaves that have suffered massive chemical burns in conjunction with that white fly damage. Um, that tendril over there is dead. You know, that tendril is doing okay. I tried to push this all against this support column, but it kind of moved due to phototropism um, the sun comes in from that direction so basically the plant moved and it might bump into the next support column uh, I don't know but you know if nothing's falling over I'm not worried I just don't want these things to destroy themselves through the weight of their own gravity so this leaf was burned so badly uh, that's where the tear I caused is and it seems to and basically be dried up and nothing's really leaking out of that and finally we have the third plant which is uh, badly burned and only has two leaves and you know finally this dead plant so I think the lack of a support system has finally gotten to this leaf um, you know, the shoot apical marrow stem is dead uh, that new leaf is dead this true leaf stayed green for that long and that's kind of surprising so I'm gonna remove this thing um, after another day or two after it dries up and basically dies so at this point it's kind of worrisome because I only have three you know really viable plants and out of those three you know only one is doing really well so this mini series could be about the triumph of one lone plant over all the others but I'd like to, you know, eventually get to the flowering stage and the honeydew, the fruiting stage, but I don't even know if these can uh, cross-pollinate. So I'm not quite sure what the honeydew situation is with uh, pollination and fruiting. I haven't really looked into that. Um, you know, that's so far away in the future. I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. So for now, I'm just going to talk about the watering situation. So this patch of dirt in the center has been wet for this long. You know, I think another problem has been overwatering. And, you know, there are many explanations for symptoms of, you know, what happens to a plant. Um, these leaves are kind of uh, curled. They're kind of like wrinkled. And so this patch of dirt in the center has remained wet for a really long time. It just hasn't ever dried out during this entire uh... So this patch of dirt in the center has been wet for a really long time and I think that's due to overwatering. So I bought another one of these pots for a potato growth experiment and I found that that uh, cross shaped trench at the bottom has four holes in it in which water seep in when you fill up that tray in the bottom which is right here through that uh, lip opening so that wets the soil on the bottom so it's a direct water to soil contact and if you fill up that tray in the bottom it wets the soil from the bottom up so there are also those uh, slit vents that enable um, water to sort of moisturize the soil from the bottom up through evaporation and condensation into the soil but I think the direct watering action from those four holes is um, much uh, of a stronger force. So when I first, you know, watered this a week after, and then the next day I filled up that tray, I basically overwatered again. So that could be a source of stress for these plants. The fact that it took this long for this spot to dry out, like well over a week, like maybe 10 days, and it's not even fully dry on the surface yet, means that there's just far too much uh, water in the soil. So you know I can't water again from the bottom for quite a while 
I'm just going to hold off and let the soil dry completely on the top. And these plants will probably be happiest during that phase when I actually let the soil dry out for a bit. It's day 84 of this honeydew germination experiment and this champion plant has already outgrown this support column and its tendrils still haven't found the need to bind to it yet but the column itself is providing some support to this plant uh, right over here and it's also kind of supporting that leaf. I just saw a springtail running around on this tendril so it kind of has the same problem as the ginger plant. So the pots are connected together. If you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, please check out my channel and go to the ginger videos. I started them much later than this honeydew experiment. So I might need to spray some more insecticide all over to kill everything. So in other news, this plant is almost completely dead. It still has that one true leaf that's not completely rotten yet. That it seems to have been infected by something. Uh, I'm not sure if that's just running out of water or is it some kind of uh, rot um, microbial disease that's invaded this plant and caused it to die because I expected this one to survive considering the remaining leaves it had after my uh, whole Lysol fiasco still were completely green and as you can see the last true leaf it's very small it's all gray and fuzzy now and that happened a few times in past experiments it generally means things are going to end badly and if you look over here that last true leaf that was developing is dead too it also kind of turned fuzzy gray but this plant still continues to hang around it might die later but you know I'm hoping that it won't regarding this other survivor it's been moving steadily counterclockwise so I think it'll hit this pole before it goes back to that one and it's basically exhibiting phototropism and going towards the direction of the sun so I think that's a good sign you know it's not dead or inert okay it's day 85 and as you can see I've rearranged one of these uh, plastic support columns I now have two columns supporting this although neither of the tendrils that are active seem to be reacting to these substrates Maybe they're too smooth or inorganic. You know, they're just made of plastic, so maybe that's the issue. I'm very tempted to get a branch from outside of a different species of plant and just put it next to it and see what happens. So this champion plant is doing very, very well. It's working on more and more leaves. Uh, this is one of the active tendrils I refer to. Um, you'll remember maybe 20 or 30 days ago there was a uh, a plant that I broke during the transplant and basically that's right over there it's just a withered stem dead that root system never regenerated a new plant so I was expecting it to I was hoping but you know these plants are probably just too young to be able to do that then you have this other plant that's coming along decently but it's not really making progress at the same rate and the reason is it has so many compromised leaves as opposed to you know this plant it just has so many leaves working for it. even the compromised ones are still mostly functional and green so that makes a huge difference the more leaves it has the more surface area those leaves have you know the development is going to be exponentially or geometrically faster than one that only has say two leaves or a uh, you know three badly burned ones and two uh, small ones none of which are very large in size so this champion plant is now outgrowing these support columns but I've placed the support columns at strategic positions if you look here um, that's a good position to support that fork and down here that's supporting another fork and essentially well this one is also supporting that leaf a little bit so when you look at that bend over there that originally was the point at which the rest of this stuff was pointing straight up you know perpendicularly until the plant got too big and kinda leaned and fell over so now it's just become a kink you know a bend that's hovering above the ground but um, these support columns are definitely relieving some of the stress 
along with the edge of the pot. Earlier today I used the open nozzle of my vacuum while I was vacuuming to kill a white fly that I had noticed buzzing around in the soil and I killed two manually later in the bathroom. So white flies are definitely around. Um, I'm not sure if they're coming from this soil in the three pots I have indoors or if they're just wandering in during the day through um, you know the screen door. I think the white flies are just kinda wandering in through the screen door because if there were eggs in the soil I would suddenly see hundreds if not thousands all come out at the same time assuming that's even how this works. I mean I did make reference in the beginning of this series about how I once had a bag of soil under my kitchen sink and that was just generating dozens and dozens and eventually hundreds of flies so I think that could happen too um, but now that I've sprayed some insecticide on this soil maybe that'll kill things but I haven't done so on the other two pots for my other experiments so that could be a problem